Welcome back to the Ultimate Whiskey Channel. This week we have a pairing. We've selected Old Forester for a bourbon. We've got the Jura for a scotch. And we've got a little something special uh, brewed in Monroe, Louisiana called Flying Tiger, the Burma Blonde. So we've got a bourbon, a scotch, and a beer. Um, these, these are, we did kind of pick these out. We, we do think these will taste pretty well together. So uh, the Old Forester is a selected barrel. Uh, it's just kind of a special select by our local whiskey supplier in town. They, uh, they had somebody go there to the warehouse and specifically select a, a barrel. And we tried eight different expressions of the Old Forester. And this particular one, it's, it's almost identical to Statesman. Yeah, um, honestly, this one was just a, a good bit, well, a good little bit smoother. Um, and I'll tell you, I've had the ever coveted Blanton's. Yes. And I, I thoroughly believe that this is better than the Blanton's. Um, that's going to throw some people off. I know that's going to piss is. some people off, but get over it. Yeah, I mean, it's subjective. It is. Uh, that's like trying to tell me that Dalmore isn't that good. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can tell me that all day, I'm not going to believe it. No. But for a bourbon, and compared to other bourbons we've had, this is very smooth. It is. And, and we did put it on rocks because traditionally, here it's where we're from, popular to drink it this way. Popular to drink it on the rocks. And I'll tell you what I noticed about this bourbon compared to most other bourbons that I've tried is the corn is dialed way back. Oh yeah, the, the corn, the sweet corn flavor, this is toned way down. This comes in at uh, 45%. Uh, on the rocks, you really can't quite tell that. It's, it's no. very smooth. And uh, for those that are interested, this was on floor three of Warehouse One. That's pretty interesting. So distilled in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. Got the Kentucky Derby coming up pretty soon, so that's an interesting fun fact. And uh, for those of you that are wondering why we didn't have a video last week, last week was dry week. Dry week. Uh, we try to throw a dry week in every so often just as a quality control. Yep. Uh, it helps to reset your palate, but it also lets you see if there's a developing problem. Definitely. Uh, if you go through dry week and you can't make it a week without whiskey, probably time to start reaching out to some folks. Yeah, so you, you want to uh, drink responsibly. Definitely. So, But that being said, we'll drink responsibly. We'll drink responsibly. I can smell oak very strong on this. Typical to a bourbon. Not a bad thing. I, I, I'm, I like the oak smell. But it doesn't burn like a lot of the new oak does. No, it does have a lot of oak. And I'm actually, normally I can't pick out many flavors from bourbons other than corn, but I am able to pick out a little honey. I can tell that. I can, I can get a little honey out of it. And that's about where it ends, honey and corn. But, but I was able to I was able to go somewhere. That's right. We got something out of it. It's a little oily actually for a bourbon. It's got a little oiliness to it. It's kind of interesting. It does. And and for a bourbon, I mean, we always talk to price point. Yeah, sixty bucks. Sixty bucks. We got it on special because we got it uh, whenever they were doing locally. there. We got it locally on release night. They had yep. a big tasting. We went in, tasted eight. It was eight. I think it. I think it was. It was all eight of their expressions? All eight of their expressions. Yeah. Um, they were all, prog they progressively got better. We started off with the original and then just went through the lineup. Yep. And we... They were pretty much organized. Yeah. Uh, price. It got yeah. to the most expensive one. They were all really good, actually. And this, this was actually a little bit cheaper than the... What one was it? The 18... Uh, the 1920, I think. 1920, perhaps. Yeah. But I thought that it was better. I did too. Actually, we could have bought a bottle. I was set on buying a bottle of bourbon. Could have been any one of them. I really wasn't going to complain about the price. I specifically selected this one. This is the one that I thought was the smoothest for a bourbon. We decided on it. And there yeah. were a few other people drinking, uh, tasting them as well. I think that was pretty much the consensus that this, this particular one is kind of the smoothest. Yeah. Now, second, I, I would say the Statesman, though. I would. Yes. This is n almost identical to the Statesman. So now, if you want to get drunk, get the 1920. Yeah, it's got kick. It's got yeah, kick. Well, it's 
medicinal grade alcohol. That's right. There's an interesting story about that during the Prohibition. Yeah. The only way they could get a hold of such liquors was as through a, a pharmacist. Through a pharmacist as a medicinal product. So, and it had to be really high percentage. Yes. It was like one, 115, I do believe. Yeah, 115 proof or higher. It's, it's, it was high. It was really high. And, uh, but I liked it. It would throw you around the room a little bit. Oh, it, no. It would drag you around it, kicking and screaming. It didn't care. Yeah. It burned. Yeah. But it, it's really good. Uh, honestly, I'd give it... For a bourbon... For a bourbon, I'd give it a good four. I was going to say three and a half. Well, the reason that I say four is because I'm trying to be nice be to it. I'm trying to be nice to bourbon. I'm not a big bourbon guy. I'm, I'm really trying to be nice to it. Uh, but yeah, I'd give it a solid four. I'm good with that. I'm going to say we're going to average it 3.75 out Sounds of five. Sounds good to me. So, on to our scotch. Eura is a damn good bottle of scotch. It's a uh, lightly peated island scotch. Uh, Richard Patterson has had his hand in it. And it's just really good. They're, when I heard Richard Patterson and, and peated... Scotch, so I was immediately curious. Lots of caramel in this. Caramel. Get the peat, a little bit of smoke in there. Yeah. Nowhere near as abrasive as an eyelid, but no. just enough to enhance the senses there. You know, coming off the back of that bourbon like that, that's a pretty good pairing. It is. Um, and, and a lot of it is because... Is the bourbon's being so simple. The bourbon's keeping things simple. And then this comes in and it knocks it around a little bit and changes the the, the flavor profile and it shows you, hey, you got something going on. Yeah. So that's a good that's a good transition there. It is. I could easily start out an evening and have a few sips of uh, the old Forester and then move into a Jura. Yeah. I think any of the, the Highland type stuff and anything like that with just a little bit of smoke yeah. would probably be good. This, it, it reminds me of Dalmore. Add some more peat. Yes. Yes. Can't go wrong with Dalmore. Just a little peat to make it slightly more interesting. And on a scale of five, this one's hard for me because this is one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as far as the scotch goes, I mean, it's like four, three, four, four. I was going to say four. I was going to give it a four, so. Yeah. Well, Richard Patterson you know, gives it a little extra. Yeah. I mean. So. Yeah. Four and a quarter out of five. Yeah, four and a That's quarter. That's a fantastic, good transition from yeah. from a bourbon into this Jura there. Good yeah. transition. And now, it's time to crack a cold one open with the boys. One bourbon down, one scotch down, one, one beer. beer. This is a really interesting beer. It's a blonde, brewed in Monroe, Louisiana. Oh, damn. And this is a good time of year to start drinking beer yeah. because... You know, whiskey seems like it goes really good when it's cold outside, and when it's hot outside, cold beer is where it's at. Cold, cold beer starts to sound better and better. Now, if you'll notice, we're not in the full long sleeve shirt and vest and all that good stuff, but that's because we down in the south and it's already hot here. Hotter than the devil dick after fucking a two dollar hooker in Thailand. That's that's pretty hot. Pretty hot. So, but I'll tell you, this is a nice smooth beer. It's a good, it's a good blonde beer. Uh, Flying Tiger. It's named after uh, oh General Chenault's Flying Tigers yeah, World War uh, II. World War II. Um, he went over there and showed the Chinese how to fly a fighter jet. They killed so many Chinese people and shot down so many Chinese airplanes that the Chinese people he realized that China was on our side in World War II. Japanese people. He was close, and, <clears> and at least he was on the same. Con. That allegedly they called the American fighter pilots the Flying Tigers. It had absolutely nothing to do with the way that they painted their planes. Nothing to do with the way they painted their planes. It had everything to do with the way they painted their planes. It probably did. So, good beer. And good it's, beer. They did go good together. And they got a hot big titty bitch sitting on there too. She's pretty and her tits look fake. Well, it's drawn on, so of course they're fake. I don't know if they had fake tits in World War II. I don't know. That's some good research. Let us know in the comments. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see next. You name it, we'll probably drink it. We'll definitely drink it. He'll buy it. I'll drink it.
He's good at that. On the couch tonight, we had us one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. One beer. And it was, it was a nice transition. Uh, the simplicity of the bourbon going to the complexity of the scotch to the relaxation cold. of the cold Burma Blonde. Especially this time of year, it's heating up out there. Yeah. Old Thurgood had it right, didn't he? Yeah, he did. So, at the end of the night, we're always going to end on scotch. Oh yeah, that's just monkey shoulder for the win. House, house scotch here. Yeah, because they're scotch. And everything else. Until next time, friends. Slime Slime